Hey. I'm good. I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Marcus, for asking me to be part of, of tonight. Yes. Um, I'm going to do something that I don't normally do, but um, I actually I have a bunch of pieces I perform right on the regular, and so then I have a bunch of pieces that I've sort of written and printed out, and I stick in a drawer somewhere, and so I just grab a handful of them, and I figured, you know, like, these are a lot of unfinished work, so thank you for bringing unfinished work and, you know, sort of giving me, like, I was sitting on this, and I was like, should I, or should not, and so, um, um, I haven't looked at a lot of this stuff in a long time, so it's all works in progress, and so there's probably some good stuff and some stuff that needs to be edited out, so bear with me. Um, first, I would like to say that I am an addict in recovery. I had a really, like, severe addiction to crystal meth. Um, it ruled my world for 10 years. Um, I was introduced to it 15 years ago, and 10 years ago, it just, it just, really took over. Um, in December, will be a year since my last relapse. And um, there was literally a time when I was homeless on the streets, one outfit, didn't know where I was going to go, didn't know where my next meal was going to come from. Um, and this is something I call the night before rehab. It's, it's reflective of where I was before I went into the rehab. Accompanied only by the thoughts weighing heavy on my mind and all my worldly possessions stuffed in a knapsack. Like a cross that I bear burdening my shoulders and my back, I walked through the night toward morning, through the darkness toward the light. My feet hurting, stinking. I felt invisible, alone. I would tell myself it's the little things in life that matter most, not the material things I'd lost or the labels on my clothes. I have come to know that I have come to know that there are no dollars there is no dollar sign on peace of mind, but at the time peace of mind seemed far away for sure. I heard someone on a cell phone saying that her life was all fucked up. Mine was worse. Perhaps not as bad as the next guy. Not a victim of circumstance, but of my own choices. Still a victim just the same. I only had myself to blame. Raindrops kept falling on my head. I wondered where the hell I was going. Seeking shelter in a doorway, my eyes looked out toward a horizon obstructed by wet concrete and cement. I searched my pocket full of lint mixed with tobacco from a clip Lucy smoked oh so long ago, as if expecting to find something overlooked when searched countless times before. Crashing, coming down hard, with no drug left to continue my escape, my reality invaded, creeping toward me like shadows in the night. <clears throat> Standing there, I allowed myself to plunge backward into memory, recalling a beauty beyond the confines of my comprehension, brushing her hair into a bun as I, her only son, pretending to sleep, watched her silently, her sense of privacy trying not to disturb. Her lapis de ceja raised to her brow, shaping the contours of the arch, filling my heart as she prayed to El Señor to keep us safe from any harm. The same lapi de ceja she used to draw mustaches on the face of Mijito, sitting as she described the man that I was meant to be. Un cirujano, un abogado, hombre casado, living life sin, sin pecado. My chest swells with nostalgia and lament, thinking about how foolishly my youth was spent, left to wonder where the fuck my promise went, couldn't even cop a telly for the night or a weekly room for rent. Thoughts of suicide fly by like a drive-by, and I find that there are many ways to lose your life all at once or one day at a time. Despite those set of circumstances, I mustered up the gratitude and thank God for my life. It's always darkest before the dawn, and each new day brings with it yet another opportunity to get it right. As fucked up as this country is, I salute the stars and stripes, and the ones like my boy Benny, who have paid the ultimate price so we won't have to sacrifice our way of life. Had this become my way of life, giving in to my demands? I have to keep reminding myself that with just one taste, I become someone I despise, someone not even the devil would recognize. I am a soldier in the trenches, an army of one, an internal war I fight. Trying to ignore the cravings that I pray would soon subside, the mud becomes my mattress, the rain, the blanket that covers me. I will weather this storm and be reborn. Yeah. Um, so obviously that's a very
very, very, very rough. 